All right, welcome to Chapter 5, Arrays. All right, arrays are kind of cool, like functions. Um, they allow us to group uh, a bunch of data together. You know, up to this point, when I said create five variables, you were like, okay, number one, variable number two, variable number three. So you had to create five unique variables. Um, but arrays uh, allow us to put um, a group of data together into one group. All right, so an array is just a collection of data that has to be the same type. So they all have to be type integer. They all have to be type double. They all have to be type Boolean. Wh whatever it is, the type has to be the same. So I can't have a temperature of 70 and a temperature of 70.5. So every item in the array is the same type. So let's say you know I had a group of test scores for students, or I had a collection of Magic the Gathering cards. You know I could use an array to store all that individual data, and then I can just manipulate the array instead of having you know let's say if I, I got a class of 20, instead of having 20 test scores to manipulate individually, I can just do one thing to manipulate the array. So one way to think of arrays are just a storage container um, again, of, of unique items that are similar because um, uh, they're the same type of like test scores, temperatures, cards, uh, student names, whatever you wanted to do, you can store them in an array. All right, inside the array, you've got your items or your values. Um, and the names are listed on like page 189 so they have a bunch of different names for the, these things. I prefer to call them elements. Um, I know there's another professor who likes to call them indexed variables. Um, I've never heard them called subscripted variables. Um, so inside the array when we put values in there so you know the, the array uh, value of 5 or whatever I call them elements inside the array um, other people call them indexed variables. So if I have an array of 12 temperatures, I have 12 elements in my array, or 12 indexed variables in my array. So again, I'll, from this point on, I'll probably just typically call them elements. All right, so some things to keep in mind when you're doing arrays. Um, you have to declare the array. Remember, just like uh, any other variable, um, it has to be declared before it can be used. It can also be declared with other variables. So I may do, you know, integer, um, max size, comma, you know, uh, some other value, blah, comma, and then declare my array in the same line of code. So they can be declared in the same line of code with other variables. Um, we typically declare them with a size, but there are times when they are. Um, declared or, or first presented without a size uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the chapter um, but at the beginning let's just focus on we declare them with a size and there's a reason for that that we'll talk about here in just a second also um, the elements inside the array can be called individually so you know I may want to access you know the fourth element in an array well I can access that one element by itself um, in the array without having to access every item in the array. And eventually I'll get to a coding example which will kind of clear some of this stuff up. Sometimes, it, especially in coding, it's hard to describe something. It's a lot easier to code it. Alright, so when I create an array, um, we typically do it this way. So there's always a type, so the, the, this, the, the elements in this array are going to be of type integer. The array name is temp, which is short for temperature, and it has a size of 5. Now that's the typical way of, of uh, declaring your variable or creating your array. You can also create your array and fill it at the same time. So here, you know, I'm going to have um, type integer. The array name is temp. It's going to have five values, and here are the five values in my array. You can also create the array this way. You know, integer, temp, and then nothing and then say hey here's the three values and that's going to create an array of size three so lots of different ways to create your array but your array basically is a type um, a name and then the size and that's it and we use brackets to declare the size or, or after the the array name and then we use curly braces um, to put elements in there or, or to fill the values of the elements now that's the basic way to create an array but as we move forward you're going to see um, that we kinda don't really use stuff like this and the reason is 
it's a lot harder to make changes if you've previously declared the array of size 5 and then you gotta go make a change you have to go back and rewrite almost the the entire code so what we typically see later on is stuff like this where we'll create a constant it'll be an integer value type and it'll be number of stuff equals 5 and then we'll create the array so it's going to be of type integer the array is going to be called score and its size is going to be number of stuff and then because number of stuff is 5 this creates an array of size 5 and that way all I have to do is change number of stuff and then the array side changes automatically throughout the program so when you see an array size that has a a, a name instead of a number um, don't let that throw you off um, that's just it's a, it's a more advanced way so that uh, we can change the size of the array by just changing one value without having to recreate the array or, or do anything like that alright some important things to remember about arrays um, as far as memory goes you know when you declare an array let's say we declare an array of size 5 what happens is the computer then goes to your memory and looks for five consecutive memory blocks and then reserves those five memory blocks uh, for the array and it needs five consecutive memory blocks so it can't take two blocks here then one block over there and then two blocks somewhere else it needs five consecutive memory blocks and there's a reason for that but it numbers these blocks zero through four so if you have an array of size five those blocks would be numbered zero through four so zero one two three four and those would be your five uh, numbers and the reason it does all this and it has to be in consecutive order and we start with is because when you create an element only the very first memory address is used that's what's passed on um, hey here's the first memory address and that way if I know if I'm looking for element 2 it's two blocks from the start and this way I can save space because instead of an array of 10 consisting of 10 different memory locations every time that stuff is called I only have to remember one memory location so if I it's an array size 10 and I'm looking for element 9 um, here's the starting location and I just count 9 from that location and then that that's where I go so that's why arrays have to have a size if you try to create an array with with no size by itself to declare it um, your compiler will typically give you an error because it doesn't know how much memory to reserve so just a quick recap when I create an array I create a consecutive group of memory blocks um, for the array size if I have an array of size 10 I create 10 consecutive memory blocks all together and then the array only contains the memory address for block 0 and then everything else is based off of that alright so again here in this example um, I create an array the array is called A and it has six elements in there those six elements in memory are numbered 0 through 5 so make sure you're good with that if I ask you for the fourth element in an array it's 1 2 3 4 it would be a 3 so be ready for that because I'm pretty sure you're gonna get that on a quiz question um, if any of you guys have ever done IP math or anything like this you guys all understand that we typically um, when we get into programming or binary or any hexadecimal whatever we always start our numbers at zero because zero is a valid number so don't let that trip you up in this case if we create when we create the array I can do a size of six saying hey I need six memory blocks but then when I call individual elements there is no element six because element five is the highest one alright so moving forward so if I do you know integer temperature 5 I'm declaring the array so declaring the array and calling an element are totally different so make sure you're aware of that when I create the array I need to put the size in there when I'm calling an element I need to put the element number in the brackets so here I'm declaring the array so it's, it, it's integer temperature 5 so there is no temperature 5 element to call and if you call that in your program some compilers will not flag that as, as wrong and then your program when it tries to call element 5 or um, temperature element 5 says hey there this is I'm trying to call the sixth element so it just fills it with a zero and then you get all kinds of weird stuff in your code 
So make sure you're solid that if you have an array of size 5, they are numbered 0 through 4. And when you call those elements inside the array, they are numbered 0 through 4. So if you want the first element in an array, it is element 0. If you want the second element, it is element 1. So in here, if I'm calling an individual element, so temperature 3 is my variable, I'm actually calling the fourth element. So I hope that makes sense. Just remember, the declaration and the call are two different things. The declaration is just setting the parameters and setting the size. The call, when I'm calling individual elements, I have to call them by their memory location, and those memory locations always start at zero. So in this example, um, integer n equals 2, and then score um, n plus 1 equals 99, you know, which element inside the array uh, now holds 99 as the variable? And that would be the fourth element because it would be temperature 3. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So score 3, or the fourth element, would now be number 99. So I hope you're all good with that now. Um, if, <laughs> if, if not, make sure you ask a, a question in the discussion forums. Um, because that's kind of a, a, a very unique topic to erase uh, and something that, that a lot of people will screw up as they're going through the exams and the quizzes. Especially if you have not seen that before, like in IP math or binary or some other place. All right, so moving on. What do we do with arrays? Well, we typically do two things. We either search them for a value, um, you know, hey, does it have this value, or what's the highest value in this array? You know, uh, it may be an array of uh, quiz scores. I want to see who had the highest score or who had the lowest score. Um, or, hey, did, did anybody score a zero? Um, so I'm looking for a particular value. So I'm searching the array for something. Um, or I'm going to sort the array, biggest to smallest, smallest to biggest, um, and that's where I'm moving the elements and putting them in order so that element zero is the, the smallest and then element, you know, whatever the, at the end is, is the biggest or however I want to do that. And the main tool for doing that uh, is a for loop. So we use for loops for what we call stepping through the array. So we create a loop like this, you know, for i is going to start out at 0 because we're talking about memory loop position 0. And as long as i is less than 5, keep adding 1. And then c out, score i, which in this case would be 0. So the first element in the array is going to be off by the max minus whatever the score is. And then it runs again, so then it adds 1 to this and it runs it for you know element uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's how we step through the array. We use four loops. All right, so up to this point, it's been a lot of blah, blah, blah. Let's actually look at it on the screen to see how it looks. All right, let's see how bad I can screw this up. So first, we want to declare some variables. So I'm going to create three variables. They're going to be of type integer, and I'm going to make variable i. Then I'm going to create my array, which is going to be score. And I'm going to try to spell it correctly this time. And I'm going to make it size 5. And then I'm going to have another one called max. And that's going to be it. So remember when I said arrays can be declared in the same line as other code. So this would be an example of that. Um, and if you just wanted to, if you only were declaring an array, you could just get rid of the i and the max and just do integer score 5 uh, colon or semicolon. All right. So now I want to send something out to the screen to get the user to input. Hey. Uh, enter five scores. And now, again, you can end this with um, slash n. Or you could do this and lie. So, again, it's just your preference. So, if you want to do your stuff. Like that, um, I, I don't have. I will not score you anything different, even though I typically do my stuff like that. All right, now, so now I'm asking them to enter the five scores. Now I want them to fill the array, and if I do C in, and then I put the array, and start at element zero, 
the five scores they enter will go into the array in order. So you don't have to specify, hey, the first number is going to be element zero, and the second number is going to be element one, and the third number is going to be element three. All you have to do is start, show the array where the start position is, and then everything they enter will pop into the elements in order. So it makes it all nice and easy. Now I'm also going to grab max here, and max equals score at element zero. So at this point, the user is going to enter five scores, and those scores are going to fill the array, and then the max score is going to start at um, element zero, even though that may not be the max score. But we'll manipulate that here in a second. So to manipulate that, uh, or step through the array to find the max score, we use a for loop. So for I, oh my gosh, why do you guys let me do such stupid stuff? Uh, and again, you don't have to have that so close. You can do it like that, however you want to do it. So, uh, in this case, we're going to do this. And then i is less than 5, then i plus plus. And then start and stop. Now, C in is going to be score I, and then if score I, oh my gosh, you know, I should just like type the stuff and like keep pausing the video so you guys don't see the things, um, is greater than max. then max equals score i. Alright, and then me being anal, um, I'll probably move that. I just like spaces in my stuff, I don't know why. Alright, so what I did was I created a loop that said hey start at i, and in this case i is 1, and then if the score of that position, which now is element 2, is greater than max, then he becomes the max. So do you see how I step through the array here to find the highest score? So I just said I declared the, the very first variable as the max score, and then said hey compare this to the other four variables, and if any of these is bigger than max, then make that the new max. So I start at the beginning of the element and then I walk all the way through there. So anytime we're doing, um, typically doing stuff in the array, whether we're searching, whether we're sorting, we typically always start at element zero and then work all the way through. Now in this case, I started here at element one. How come I started at element one? Why did I make it i equals one and not i equals zero? Any guesses? All right, if you want to look at it and think for a minute, pause the video now. Otherwise, I'm going to give you the answer. All right, I only, I remember here, I created the very first element, element zero, as the max score. So I only had to compare that to four other variables. So I was able to use one and not zero. So by using one, I only used it one, two, three, four, and then the next one would have been um, higher than five, so it would have stopped. So it would not have run. So it would this one would only run four times because I only have to compare the first score to scores two, three, four, and five. Does that make sense? But normally, when you see these loops going through the array, um, your loops almost always start. Ah, oh my gosh! Why do you guys let me do this? Start at zero like that. All right, so let me fix that. All right, so now we're back in um, the program, and then we're going to do a C out, and we're going to say, hey. Um, actually, just let me I'll pause the video here real quick. All right, so C out, you know, the highest score is now max, and the scores and their differences from the highest are. So now I want to show what the difference between each score is and the max score. So to do that, I have to step through the array again. So what do I need? I need a for loop. Way to go. 
Ah, what am I doing? Where's my mouse? All right, so I need to do a four. Oh my gosh, don't tell anybody I did that. <laughs> and now we're stepping through the entire array. So we have to start at zero. So then it's going to be C out. And we're going to say, hey, score i is off by, and actually I want some spaces um, in there. And then again, remember you can go down here and keep it in the same line. And then we're going to say max minus score i. Ah, and maybe that helps to clear. Ah, why? Why? I bet you guys wish that you could go back in time and make me take a typing class, huh? And that's it. So what this is going to do is it's going to start at the first element, and then it's going to. So now we're talking about you know score zero because score you know i score is i and i is zero. So at the first element, um, subtract that from max and then do it all again so we do it all the time or we do it over and over again so if I run this it's gonna ask me for five scores so I'm gonna put in nine three four fifteen and eleven and then it's gonna say the highest score is fifteen the scores and their differences from the highest are so um, 9 is off by 6 from the high, 3 is off by 12 from the high, um, and then 15 is off by 0 for the high. So even though we know one of these scores is going to be the highest, we don't know which one, so we had to step through the entire array. So that's why this one is 0 and not 1 like it is up here. Woohoo! So now we're cooking with gas. Alright, let me do another example. And I'm going to void this stuff all out. And give me some space. All right, now let's talk about using um, an array inside a function. Ooh, now we're getting complicated. All right, here's where it gets kind of weird. So I can do void and fill up. So fill up is going to be my function. And then in that, it's going to have an integer array of a and I'm going to leave the size empty. Oh! And then integer size and I'm done. So I now here's an array that's going to be like I have no idea how big the size of this. So at this point the array is not created. You can't create an array unless you know the size. But this is just saying hey this function is going to have two elements an array and a size. Um, so when the array is called or when those values are put in, then the array will be created. All right, and whoever noticed that I declared this, uh, let me do a space before I yeah that that should not have been in main. All right, so now in main I'm going to create an integer, and now I'm going to create uh, my arrays. So array A is going to be size 5 and array B is going to be size 10. Oh, look at that, two arrays. Alright, then we're going to, oh, sure helps if I do that right. <laughs> Makes me want to cry. And you know what? I did not capitalize that, did I? Holy mackerel, I suck. Don't tell anybody though. Alright, so now we're going to do A and 5 and then we're going to do fill up B with 10. All right, then I'm going to close main and then go outside of main and create my function. So void fill up and integer A. And integer size. And then I need to start and stop. 
and then I need my function. So my function is going to be C out enter the value for size space numbers and again you can do it like this or you can do the uh, well, I w this is why I never do that because I always forget that and then I gotta go through my loop so for integer I equals zero I is less than size and then I add I'm gonna do put in a I and then send back out animal done. Now, what I did here was screw this up because I didn't put a bracket here. <laughs> Alright, so let me go back through this. So, I declared my function, and again, if you're commenting, you know, just say, hey, you know, function declaration or whatever you want to do. And then I created my two variables, and then I asked, called the function twice. The first time I call the function, it's going to have a size of 5, and the second time I call the function, it's going to have a size of 10. And then when I call the function, it's going to enter the size, so either 5 or 10, because that, remember that line comes here, and the A goes here or the B goes there. So enter 5 numbers, and then 4 at the beginning, as long as one, you know, we're, we step through the array, we're going to index it or we're going to uh, list its index number or its element number and then at, after we have put our numbers in it's going to give us the last element number used so I should change this to something like that the last element number used does that make sense so what I'm doing is I'm stepping through the array and when I get to the very last number, I'm going to say, oh, hey, this last number is element 6 or element 4 um, to show you that if you have an array of size 5 um, and I just went through the whole thing and I only have uh, the last number is element 3, then you've got space left for one more item in your, uh, al I'm sorry, in your array. All right, let me just run this so it makes a little bit more sense because sometimes I talk like I am a stupid. <laughs> All right, so enter five numbers. So I'm going to enter 5, 6... 2, 5, and 1. So remember, it's asking me to enter five numbers because it's here. At, right now, the program is at this point. It's saying, hey, your size is going to be 5. So when I enter those five numbers, it's going to tell me the last element number used is 4 because I used element 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's all this program does. But the reason um, the book kind of lists it here is to show you that sometimes you'll see these elements or these arrays where there is no size given and the size is given later on through the program. So in this case it's given in the function call um, a size of 5 or a size of 10. So like if I run that program all the way through, so 5 numbers, 4, 3, blah, blah, and then it says enter 10 numbers because now it's asking me for the second function call here. And then those 10 numbers are that. And then, so then said the last element is 9, but you, you get the idea. So that's what I want to show you. When you use functions, uh, we typically give them a size, but when we see them in functions or function declarations or whatever, um, there's typically not a size given. And that's because we fill that size up later. So it's not till here that those functions are created.
I'm sorry, not the function. So the array is created. When we enter a size somewhere in the program, that's when the array is, is, is physically created and that memory space is taken up. All right, I think that's going to stop with part one. Um, I'll do another part here for you. <laughs>